Email, email, email. I get asked about email all the time, so we love talking about email, and I got asked the best one. How do I build an email list starting with zero subscribers? Well, I decided to spend some time, a couple hours, outlining this on how you can build an email list in eight steps starting with zero subscribers, but even if you have an email list, the mistakes to avoid, the things to never do, and the steps to figure out where you are to reassess and audit the next level. So this applies to whether you have an email list, whether you don't, whether it's small, large, engaged, or not engaged. So I highly recommend that you listen. And now we're going to get into the episode. So we are back and I am fired up right now. I was done for the day. I was done working. I had recorded like six podcasts today and then I started thinking about email. And I started thinking about email and email and email and email and email fires me up. I tell people that I sweat email. Email like f- floods through my like body. It's the backbone of everything that we do. And in 12 years of doing this, email is the one thing that I come back to. It fires me up more than anything and it is probably the most neglected but also most important part about everything that we do in this world in business. I I can't think of one business that can't benefit from having a relationship with their customers and email is the backbone. It's the the invitation to get into people's world. And so like I said in the intro, I get asked a question like, how do you build an email list starting from zero subscribers? And so I thought about this and I said, what can I outline? What can I create on how to build an email list starting from zero, but also applies to your first 100, your first 1,000, your first 10,000, 100,000, or if you already have a list, how to continue to grow it. And so I took some really, really deep time and I outlined this, and I'm gonna walk you through this right now. But before I get into how to actually do it, I have some rules for you to keep in everything that you do moving forward. And so I made this big note on my iPad right next to me, and it literally says, do not do these things. So I'm gonna say this for you listening to this right now. Do not under any circumstances, ever do these things when it comes to your email list, no matter whether you're just starting out or you've been doing this for 20 years, this will not help you. These are not good things to do. Do not do them. Number one, do not collect emails just to hoard them. Do not collect emails just to hoard them. I watch people do this all the time, and it's really horrible when you start to think about the human psychology of getting somebody's email. You normally get somebody's email in exchange for something of value or an energy exchange or a promise, and people collect it without designing the back end or the journey. They give one quick dopamine hit, then they disappear for like three months or three weeks or however long, and that's just a letdown. That time when somebody gives to their emails a prime emotional state to build a deep connected relationship to set the paradigm and the touch point. And that doesn't come from collecting and hoarding emails and doing nothing with them until you decide you want to lose the list. It just costs you money and it costs you that relationship. Do not collect emails just to collect them. Nothing you do in your business should be accidental. Nothing you do in your life should be accidental. Email is no different. If you are going to collect emails, you need to follow what is outlined at the end of this podcast. But right now I'm going to cover the do not. So do not collect emails just to hoard them. Number two. Whether you have an email list or you do not, you must protect your email list. Having a healthy email list is one of the most important things that you can do. And by healthy, that means only allowing the right people on your list that belong on your list. Not falling into the fact that I have a big email list and it's going to make me money or I can tell people I have 100,000 people. I don't care if you have 100,000 people, if 99,000 of them aren't your customers and you can't help them and it's just an email that you're paying for that's not genuinely helping them and it's just distracting them in their inbox and pissing them off. Keep your list healthy. You have to protect it, which also starts from before you build it or from this point forward as you build it, asking yourself, do they belong on my list? Is this something that should people get people on my email list? Is this the right audience? Is this person going to be in my business or somebody that I can actually help? Or do I need to think deeper? Do I need to refine my offer? Do I need to refine my lead magnet? You have to think about this. Having all of the wrong people on your email list doesn't do you any good. Having people on your email list that don't open or don't click or aren't interested in what you have to offer don't work, which means don't do giveaways. 
Do not do giveaways. I can think of one out of a hundred times where a giveaway is an effective way to build an email list. And one of them is if you run like a couponing site. Because when you do stuff giving people away, they expect free things. And giveaways will get you a ton of leads. But think about it. When was the last time you put your real email into a giveaway? When was the last time you gave your real email for some free thing? Most of us use burner emails or fake ones or we make them up or ones we don't use anymore. And I can't think of one time I've ever given my email in exchange for like a giveaway or winning a prize and been like, now that I've given them this, I'm so excited to read their content and develop a relationship with them. Very rare and it's always transactional. And so my recommendation is don't do them. And I used to do them. I built a big email list, a couple hundred thousand people with giveaways. And after five years, I actually started over because none of them were really sustainable and it wasn't the right context. So Keep your list healthy, protect it, and do not do giveaways. Ready? This one's a big one. Do not buy an email list. 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 Did you hear me? Do not buy an email list. If you can buy it, so can everybody else. And I hate to tell you, but arranged marriages do not work. And that is what buying an email list is. It's buying a relationship that somebody else built, however they decided to build it, whether spam or real. And then it's being sold to somebody without their permission. And then you expect that you're going to be able to just slide in and build a relationship with them. It's poison. It does not work. Do not buy an email list. Now, those are all the things that I said not to do. And I'm going to wrap these with also don't overcomplicate it and be specific. You can serve people but you can't serve everybody. I don't care how good you are or how built your business is. There's not one business that has every customer in the world. You have a specific skill set, a specific message and a gift and offer to where you are right now. And that is a lot further than a lot of people that you're going to help. And so you need to find those people that are there that you can help get a win, but you can't solve everything for everyone at every time. And so you must be specific. You can get emails without specificity. You can say things like sign up for my newsletter. I don't think those are good ideas. I don't let my clients use them. I don't let my company use them. I want people that want to read emails. I want people that want to take a journey. I want people that want to use my product and want to use my service because those people get results. They pay me more money and then they tell all their friends that they're using us because we're helping them achieve their results and then they do my marketing for me. Because there's actually substance and depth there. If somebody just wants news drops, they can go follow me on social media. But if somebody wants a relationship and a journey, which is what email is, us using it to take people on a journey and design a journey for them and help them accomplish their goals. So they trust us. They feel safe with us. They escalate up our value ladder. They become our fans, our advocates, our best customers. They bring all their other ones in. Then it has to be done intentionally. And so I don't want that just, oh, I'm just here, I'm just here. No, I want committed people. So those are all of the things that I think you should not do. So one of the things that I'm passionate about is email. And we have an email program that is 12 years of my life in it. And it's called the Eternal Flame Method. So if you're interested in it, you can go to the eternalflamemethod.com and jump on our training. Um, I'm either doing the webinar live or it's an on-demand one and I would love to have you. And that's all I'm going to talk about it. But here is where I broke down into eight steps, eight steps on how to build an email list starting with zero subscribers or how to take my email list from where it is to the next level because it all applies or how to audit what I have and start from scratch from there with a good base and nurture these people moving forward. So step number one is you have to understand yourself before you can collect an email. And this is why I teach the lighthouse. I teach this in our Facebook group. I teach this in our lighthouse method course. You have to know yourself. Your lighthouse is knowing why you do what you do, what you do, and how you do it. And if you are not clear and congruent, you cannot get somebody's email because you cannot take them on a journey because they cannot trust you. You cannot consistently market yourself. And so there is nothing there for them. And so step number one to building an email list starting with zero subscribers or taking yours to the next level is either becoming really crystal clear on who you are, why you do what you do, what you do, and how you do it, or auditing who you are and make sure who you were when you started your email list is still who you are and congruent or if it needs some refinement to be crystal, crystal clear. So step number one is you must understand who you are. Step number two 
is you have to know your audience better than they know themselves. And this is what I teach in the captain's assessment, also in the free Facebook group. This is the captain's assessment. And one of the mistakes that people make is they only think about what people think. I need you to understand what your audience feels. Thinking is great. You can speak to them with their thoughts, but all of their decisions are emotional. They're not logical, right? And so it's cool that you think or that they think they can't start their business, they can't lose five pounds. That's awesome. But if they're thinking their way out of their thinking, they're not going anywhere. But when you understand that they think they can't lose five pounds, but they also feel helpless and scared and alone and like a failure and not good enough, you really, really, really understand them and you understand how to speak to the threads that will pull them forward to be able to guide and lead them. So step number one is you have to understand yourself. Step number two is you have to understand your audience. And in that captain's assessment, I teach it in three levels. I teach it in the rocks, the reefs, the shoals. The rocks are the surfacey stuff, right? The logic. The reefs are the feelings, the internal stuff. And then the shoals are the paradigm, like the deep-rooted beliefs. Step number three is you must, and I mean you must design the journey you want or need them to take from where they are to where you can take them. There is no point in giving away something as a transaction just to collect an email. I don't care that you have five recipes. Don't give me five recipes and expect me to wait around for 45 days or 60 days for then you to email me again when you decide it. No, if you're going to offer me five recipes, you know something about me. You know I'm interested in smoothies. You know I'm interested in saving time. You know I'm interested in learning how to cook. So design a journey to where you can help me implement what it is that you're going to give me, whether it's an assessment or a call or a recipe guide or a workout program or something, you cannot help anybody unless you know the finish line that you're taking them to. And you can't tell them to start the race until you have clearly charted the course. And so step number three is you must design the journey you want slash need them to take from where they are to where you can take them. That is extremely, extremely important. Now, one caveat, there is a way to build an email list in the beginning by just gathering information, by utilizing it to gather information. But even then, you still need an incentive to get them on your email list and you must design the journey. Because if you're getting them on your email list to get information, then you're going to have an automated email or a phone call scheduled and you're going to have to create a journey for after. Are you going to give them the results? Are you going to follow up with them? Where are you going to guide them? You have to close all these containers. So a journey is something that has a starting line and a finish line because human beings cannot move forward until they complete something. And so part of your email gathering, whether you call it a lead magnet or a journey or an exchange for a call, is you have to design a complete journey before you can get somebody to send up for it. That whole like sew a parachute once you jump out of a plane, good luck. Let me know how that works for you. Or I'll learn how to fly on the way down. Well, we're human beings. That doesn't work. Please don't try it because you belong on this planet. Step number four is that after you do all that, if you decide that email is an effective way, because email is not always an effective way, video calls, audio calls, sometimes social media, Facebook groups are more effective ways to deliver what you want. And I've built a multi seven figure business with no email list. You do not need an email list. You should be asking yourself, is an email or an email list the most effective way to deliver what I have to offer? Now, do I think everybody should have an email list? Yes. But need and should are two different things. And so I'm saying this because I don't want you to just go build something to build it. Do it with intention. It is something that I think everybody should have because it's the backbone of your customer journey. But if you tell me your whole job is just to generate $10,000 a year in bonus income, I don't need you spending hours and hours and hours a day trying to learn this. So you have to make sure that it is what you need. And that you should, yeah, what you need. Sorry, I like stumbled on my own words. Yes, like you don't quote unquote need one, but I think everybody should have one. And so when I say that, Make sure that like you're in a place where you're ready to design this journey. You're in a place where you're ready to generate revenue. You're in a place where you're ready to build a business. If you tell me you don't want to make money for the next six months, then I don't think you should go build an email list that you're going to have to pay for and design and sink in unless you're really ready to sink those costs in and you're really crystal clear. And so I think everybody should have one because it is a way to have a direct relationship and leader relationship with your customers 
And so make sure that you're ready, right? So step number four is if email is the path and you need an email service provider. I am not affiliated with this at all. I am not paid for this. I'm not a spokesperson, but I only recommend ConvertKit. I've been using them since day one. Since they came out, I've used every other platform in the world. If you want a link and to check them out, go to mindofgeorge.com slash software. That's where we link all the software we use. But ConvertKit, in my opinion, is the email platform to choose 99.9% of the times without a couple caveats. And yet I've still figured out a way to use ConvertKit. It's the easiest. It's the most simple. They care about their customers. It's made by creators and people like us, Nathan, who founded the company. They run it with us in mind. They make it better for us. And so once you decide email is the path, which it is the path, but I want you to remember the distinction that email is the path when you're ready. So to clean this point up a little bit, let me be crystal clear with the summary. When I say number four is email is the path you need. I say is email the path you're ready to take. So make sure you're ready. Make sure you're ready to collect emails and design the journey and to be able to put the time in to build this relationship. And it's not a lot of time. It's just intentional time. And so just make sure you're ready. And then when you are, you can sign up. And ConvertKit has a free plan as well. Um, mindofgeorge.com slash software. So then once you've decided email, uh, step number four, that email is the path, then you go to step number five and you need a tantalizing offer to get their email. So let me be clear. Step number one is you know yourself. Step number two is you understand your audience at a feeling level. Step number three, you've designed the journey that you want them to take. So you know where they are because you understand them. You know who you are in your skill set. So you know where you can take them, which is the finish line. Email is the path that you've decided. So now you need a way to get them on your email list to take that journey. And so what's the tantalizing offer? Not sign up for my newsletter. But if you know them and you know yourself and it's like, hey, you know, give me your email and I'll help you lose five pounds in seven days. And you design that journey. Give me your email. I'll give you my three-step process to building your company. Give me your email. I'll give you my 10-minute nighttime routine for self-care. Give me your email. I'll help you in five minutes a day learn how to meditate. You have to understand their feelings because logic will not get them in. They have endowment to their current state of being. And you have to have an emotional pull to get them to stop what they're doing to try something new. And so speak to those feelings, right? And so you can think about like, I'll teach you how to get more done in your day to have more self-care without feeling guilty and losing sleep after you put your kids to bed. And I'm being really facetious right now. But you see these headlines all the time and you have to ask yourself, what would it take for you when you were in their shoes that you understand to go from where you were to create space in your day to create a new habit or try something new to try to get a different result? And how do you do it simply put? right? And we don't want to overwhelm people. And remember, we're not collecting emails just to collect emails. We're collecting emails to help them deliver on the result. And I'm going to tell you why. If you get somebody's email in exchange for a promise and they don't achieve the desired promise, they can't buy anything from you. If you get somebody's email and you deliver on the result that was promised, they have no choice but to eventually buy from you because you actually kept your word and built a relationship. So when I say don't collect email just to collect email, that's exactly what I'm talking about. So step number five is you need that tantalizing offer to get their email. Don't overcomplicate this. It could be a Google document. It could be one video that you create. It could be a series of short emails. It could be getting their email in exchange for a 15-minute call with you and you give them a prescription at the end of the call. Don't overcomplicate it, but what you have to ask yourself is what is the after state? Where is the finish line that you're promising them? And then the journey you design is what's going to get them there, and then you exchange email for that. Step number six is you must have a home to guide them to. So this is a place to collect their email. But things are different than they used to be when I started this 12 years ago. You don't need a website. You don't need a landing page. You could use a Google document. You could have them text you a link. You could use a many chat sequence on Facebook. You could do it manually if you want, which I still do. I still manually add people to my email list because they're the right people. But what you need is you need a place to input or collect their information. I don't recommend doing it manually. I recommend having a form, but you could send them a Google form. And that Google form would get their email and that would automatically add them to ConvertKit with Zapier. You could use ConvertKit and make a form and send them a link to the form. You could use ConvertKit and make a landing page and send them a link to a landing page. Or you could build a website with an about me page and content and all these different things. Or... You could have a link to the form and put it into a Google Doc or put that link to a form in every video you create or put that link to a form in a Facebook message or use ManyChat, get their email via Facebook message and have ManyChat through Zapier send that to ConvertKit. The how is really easy. You just need to have a place to collect their email. 
I recommend making this as simple as possible. And where that is built depends on you and your business needs and your goals, right? But I'm going to tell you right now, if you're doing this and you're getting on calls with people, I would highly recommend having an application so you know information before you get on the call. So step number six is you have to have a home to guide them to. Step number seven is now you have everything that you need to take them on this journey. You know who you are. You know who they are. You designed the journey. You figured out email is the path or collecting email is the path. You have your tantalizing offer. And so you have all the things you need to deliver. So now you just need people. So then you have the place to collect that information to deliver. So then you have to leverage the existing resources you have. Step number seven is leverage the existing resources you have. You have your own personal contact list, your own personal email. You have social media. You have friends that you can help who can then invite their own friends. You have Facebook groups that you're in. You have comment sections on Instagram. You have DMs you can slide into. You have to leverage everything in front of you to start getting momentum. You have a lot of things around you. You have the coffee shop, the gym. You have access to humans everywhere in your life. And these beautiful humans are the people that are going to give you their email in exchange for what you have to offer. So get creative and find people. You don't build a million person email list overnight. You don't build a hundred thousand person email list overnight. No matter how you splice it, you build it one by one. So find people one by one, connect with them, tell them how you're going to help them and then collect their email and deliver on your promise. And then step number eight, is you get to start sharing parts of the journey so you can help people before they opt in. So if you think about it, you're going to leverage your existing traffic, your existing resources, right? And then you're going to run out of people. And so then you're going to have to start helping people fall in love with you and trust you and learn from you. And so you pick your platform. But if you're going to help somebody lose five pounds in seven days and one of the things of the 10 things you help them with is drinking water, You can start talking about water, going in other groups, talking about water, posting on social media, talking about water. It was like, God, thank you for helping me with water. What's next? Well, come join my program. Give me your email, right? And so when you think about step seven and eight, leverage the resources you have and then start sharing parts of the journey. What we're talking about is disseminating your message. Like I use a lighthouse, right? You're just shining that light consistently over and over and over because you know who you are and you know who you're speaking to. So you speak to them to help get them closer to you by achieving goals and being magnetized to you and engaging in what you have to offer and teaching them and helping them and all those different pieces. And then you utilize that to figure out what works and what doesn't work, what gets their email and what delivers on the results. And so when you think about traffic, you're really limited. You have owned traffic, which is what you have in your resources. You have paid traffic, which is you going to pay for attention, or you have earned traffic anywhere where somebody else has an audience that you have access to. And then, of course, the people that you get can help you with referrals and incentive programs. And so then at that game, it's a consistent game of shining your light over and over and over to find the right offer for the right audience at the right time to take them on a journey. And so that is a very long way of answering the question that somebody asked me, how do I build an email list starting with zero subscribers? So I told you what not to do. I'm going to go over the eight steps real quick before I wrap the episode. Number one, you must understand yourself. Number two, you must understand your audience. Number three, you must design the journey you want or need them to take from where they are to where you can take them. Number four, if email is the path, you need an email service provider, I highly recommend ConvertKit. Uh, Go to mindofgeorge.com slash software. Uh, I am not affiliated with them, but that is an affiliate link. I do get a credit if you sign up once you start paying, but I'm not paid by them. I'm not a spokesperson for them. I pay for my plan and I've been using them since they started. Number five is you need a tantalizing offer to get their email. Number six is you must have a home to guide them to, i.e. a place to collect their email. Number seven is you must leverage existing resources that you have. Your whole job is to find beautiful human beings to be in a relationship with. And then number eight is share all the parts of the journey that you can help them with that are congruent and get attention utilizing all this traffic. Own traffic, earn traffic, paid traffic, referral programs, and incentives. So that's how I recommend doing it. I still follow these steps to that day. I still use this in every business I consult from I don't have an email list to I have millions and millions of people. And I don't think that will ever change. And so that's an answer to the question. This has been another beautiful episode. I am going to cue the outro in a minute. But just remember, before I go, relationships will always beat algorithms. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye.